Let's turn this raw file into this final image using only Lightroom Classic for the editing. As always, feel free to follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Usually for scenes like this, I would begin by merging an HDR file to have all the details in the highlights and the shadows. But in this case, I want to keep clipping in the highlights on purpose to create some kind of dramatic light effect coming in from behind the subject. So taking a look at the Instagram, you can already spot the clipping right in here. The good thing is we do have enough information in the shadows to restore all the details needed in those areas. So let's begin this process as always in the basic panel. And what I'm going to do first is to increase the exposure right away. As we take a look at the histogram, you can see some heavy clipping being introduced by this change. So right around here, I think it's a good spot. I'm just aiming for some nice visible details in the very darkest parts, especially those trees right here. I want to further work on that first by bringing up the shadows very gently. And I do want to keep some contrast. So I'm also going to bring down the blacks just to push the contrast a bit. Now back to the highlights. As I said, I want to have this clipping effect, but I also want to find a nice balance between some clipping and too much clipping. Right now, it might be a little bit too much, but we can control that by making use of that highlights slider. Let's bring them all the way down. At this point, we can see a pretty clear blob of clipping right here. I don't think that looks good. So we don't want to bring down the highlights all the way. I think we should introduce some more clipping on purpose. So we get a softer gradient from clipping to the more well exposed areas. So let's see. I think somewhere around here makes sense. It looks much better. We don't have this very obvious blob of highlights right here. It kind of fades a little bit nicer to into the surrounding areas. The reason the overexposure is okay for me in this case is we are not losing any vital details. If this area wouldn't be overexposed, we would just see fog like in the surrounding areas. So by intentionally overexposing this spot, we can make this image look a little better by making this part of the image more interesting. All right, so at this point, I also want to introduce some texture just to make the finer details of the image a little sharper and at the same time of course for a foggy scene like this having a glowy look on top makes things look much cooler so let's do that i'm going to bring down the clarity and i'm going to bring down the dehaze i'm only going to drop it very gently that should be enough to add this glow effect on top and of course i want to add some vibrance to make this to make this image more colorful and in fact, I think we can also bring up the saturation just a little bit since the base raw file is rather desaturated. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to work on the white balance since now I have a better idea of how the image is looking after the exposure adjustments. So I do think I want to make this whole shot a lot warmer. I'm going to bring up the temperature for that, introducing much more of these warmer color tones. I think right around here looks good. We do have this rich yellow coming in from the left side while still having some blue tones remaining on the right side. I think that's a nice balance. I do think there's a little bit of a green color cast. So I'm going to bring up the tint just a bit to fix that. And that's the image after the basic adjustment. So let's compare to before real quick. What you can see is we do have a much brighter image with much richer warm tones and of course this clipped area right here in the highlights. Overall the image appears still to be a little bit too flat for my taste. Of course we can change that with a bit of masking. So let's open up the masking panel and right away let me introduce some kind of a 3D effect by making the foreground a bit darker. Actually, I don't want to affect the whole foreground yet. Let me grab the object selection mask. Let's make sure the rectangle select mode is active. And I'm going to draw a rectangle around that road leading into the image. See, we get a perfect selection for the road. Now what I want to do for that is to make it darker the more it gets to the foreground. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient since I don't want to affect the road in the distance. So let's subtract that area. And what I'm going to do with the remaining uh, selection is to bring down the exposure. 
kind of adding this vignetting effect going into the image. Much better already. I think we can tweak this a little more. Let me create another object selection mask, selecting the road once more. Again, I don't want to affect the whole road, so I'm subjecting a linear gradient once more from the top, but this time I want to keep more of that road selected. And what I'm going to do with this selection is to bring down the temperature, just introducing some more color balance to this whole scene. I also think I should bring down the saturation to not make this road look too colorful. And let's bring up the clarity, adding some more details. And let's also add some texture, making this whole road look sharper. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I also want to use a linear gradient covering pretty much the whole foreground like this. And in here, let's bring up the highlights. This will just add a little more contrast to the foreground. I'm also going to bring up the whites a bit. As we bring up highlights and whites, we won't affect the darker areas of the road. So we don't have to worry about that, that vignetting effect we added previously. I also want to add some more clarity to the whole foreground. And you can see how this will give some nice punch to the area and maybe even some texture. Plus, I do think the temperature is a little bit off for the foreground. What I'm going to do is to bring it down, introducing some more blue tones, making the foreground look colder this way. Wonderful, this is looking great. At this point, I also want to work on that clipped area right here and on the left side. I'm using a radial gradient. Let's make it nice and big. I'm going to place the center right over this clipped area. And I want to further make this area brighter without necessarily pushing the highlights. So what I'm doing here is to bring up the blacks. You can see this will introduce some kind of glow effect as we are overlapping the dark tree right here. I can further improve this glow effect by bringing down the dehaze. I'm going to drop it quite heavily because I think this looks really, really cool. All right, let's maybe adjust the size of this radial gradient a little more, but as you can see, now we have this really strong light effect coming in from behind the subject. Uh, let me use a linear gradient for the very top left part like this, because I want to have some more structure where the fog fades away and we see some more of the blue sky at the very top. We can do that by bringing down the highlights a bit. And this should help, as you can see, revealing more of that fog structure. All right, then there is one more thing I wanna do. Let's create a radial gradient and I'm going to create it right in here in the center. I just want to make this area a little bit brighter by bringing up the whites. Let's maybe place it a little further down, but that's about it. And we are done with the masking adjustments. So now let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. You see, we get a much more balanced looking image this way, thanks to the masking. And now we can focus a little more on the color grading. I'm going to start in the color mixer and I wanna work on the hue since I don't like those yellow tones too much. I wanna add a hint of orange to them. So I'm going to bring down the yellow hue just a little bit. I really only wanna affect them in a very subtle way, but this is looking good. Then let's head over into the saturation tab. I want to bring up uh, the orange saturation and I want to bring up the yellow saturation just to boost those warmer color tones. At the same time, the blue tones on the, on the right might be a bit overwhelming. We can fix that by bringing down the blue saturation right around here, I think. That's it for the color mixer. For this shot, we can also apply some split toning through the color grading panel. Let's start with the highlights. And of course, we want to emphasize the warmer color tones of the highlights by making them look even warmer. So let's set up the hue. I'm going with a very warm golden-like color tone right here in the yellow range. And let's bring up the saturation. I'm going to quite heavily bring it up because I kind of want to stylize this image in this way with these very intense warm color tones. That's also the reason for me to go into the mid-tones and also apply warm color tones to them. Again, I'm using a color in the golden color range between orange and yellow, somewhere around here. And 
then I'm going to slightly bump up the saturation. I really don't want to overdo it. I just want to have a hint of yellow in those midtones. And finally, of course, we want to have some color contrast. That's why I most of the times use the shadows to add a color from the opposite side of the color wheel. So in this case, let's add some blue tones. And again, you, I only use very subtle amounts of saturation to not overdo it. But this is looking great. Let me turn off the split toning. I hope you can see the difference after the YouTube compression. But that's what the image looked like before. And that's it after the split toning. Much, much better. Now, the final thing we can do in regards to the color grading is in the calibration tab. And that's just something I always do for my images because I like the look of it. I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue just a bit. This will affect these warmer color tones in a very nice, pleasing way. It will also turn those blue tones into a more cyan looking color. And once I have done that, I'm also going to bring up the saturation to add more color to the image. Wonderful. Finally, let's sharpen the image in the details tab. And as always, I'm going to bring down the radius all the way. I'm going to increase the details all the way up. And of course, we want to make use of masking. So only the important areas of the image will get sharpened. So hold on the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. So we can nicely filter out all the background, targeting only the trees and some parts of the foreground like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. And that's it. Now, of course, there are some sensor spots left in this image. Let's clean them real quick. I'm going to click on that remove tool up here um, using the heel brush. Let's click on visualize spots. You can see this will make it much easier to spot all the sensor dust. And I'm going to brush my way through the image. All right, and there we have it. That's the finished image with intentional clipping in the highlights on the left side. Of course, this effect won't work for every image, but sometimes, like in this case, it can add a really nice effect to it. So if you have any questions about the whole editing process, or if you want to add anything, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.